Welcome to another all new edition of Let's Talk your, on your favorite channel, of course, Huda TV. We certainly hope you're enjoying the new program here, the new decor. It's been a while. We're back, you guys. We didn't record much in the month of Ramadan, and we've been experiencing some, some difficulties here where we are based here in Egypt. So please make the wall for us and make the wall for this channel that we can continue to broadcast and continue to be the premier and pioneer English language Islamic channel, inshallah ta'ala. You guys support us on, facial, uh, on social media. Facebook, YouTube, all that stuff. It is really, truly, incredibly important. Continue to email us. Give us your feedback. This channel, it's a family, and you guys are part of that family, of course, in the most important aspect of it. So please continue to give us your feedback and support us on social media. Having said that, we're going to move on to our topic. Of course, Let's Talk is a youth show. So inshallah ta'ala, in this episode, we would like to speak about obstacles, challenges, perhaps even dangers, and their solutions facing the youth today. And in order to talk about the youth, I bring some young people from all around the world so we can have an interesting roundtable uh, discussion. Uh, so we want to welcome them. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to your brothers. Alhamdulillah. If we can just start from my right again and start, you know, with your name, where you're from, and a little bit about the topic and why you think it's an important topic. Or share a little bit about yourself with the viewers. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Muhammad Garba, Nigerian, a graduate of Al Azhar University. Why are you brothers are always so many Nigerian brothers named Garba? <laughs> very popular name. I right? think yeah, it's a tribal name, so very popular, especially within Hausa and Fulani. Brother, so how many yeah. Balakat? So you graduated from Azhar University this year. Alhamdulillah. So where is the Azhar closed, Aki? We need to bring them soon. <laughs> yeah, inshallah, very soon I'll, I'll come with it, inshallah. So brother, just on a side note, you came here from your country, Iloran, mm -hmm. already having some. Uh, Azhar credentials, and then you entered Azhar? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, before you are eligible to enter Al Azhar, so you, uh, you must have a, a Thanawiya, that is, Isla high Islamic schools that is ability to Al Azhar, that is, Shahada Thanawiya Al Mu'adala Al Azhar. Okay, and you know so why I ask you that? Because you were a young man mm. at that time. You still are a young man, but you were really young at that time. So to accomplish that goal, mm. you must have faced obstacles and challenges. Mm -hmm. And now it took many, many years, but now you reach Cairo, you graduated yeah. after studying five years at Al Azhar University. So you reach a, an accomplished by the grace of Allah, a tremendous goal. Yeah. So in this episode, perhaps we can talk about your path to achieving that and the obstacles that you faced, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Let me go to the next brother, go ahead. Uh, Welcome Abdul back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Abdullah Aimer, senior, like you know, student at Al Azhar University, Faculty of Language and Translation. And I'm from here, from Cairo. From okay, Egypt. great, inshallah. Yes. And what do you think of, how old are you, brother? I'm 23. Okay, inshallah, so perfect age. So I want you to share in this episode as well some sure. obstacles and challenges and goals in your personal life that could sure. perhaps uh, share with the viewers. And I also know you are, you are Egyptian based here in Cairo, so perhaps you can. Talk about challenges now facing the youth here in Egypt sure. in particular in Saudi. I will be happy. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, brother. Go ahead, brother. I have a lot of questions for Abdullah, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived in, uh, my name is Basil, I'm from Canada. I've lived in Egypt for almost two years now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I study Arabic here and uh, sometimes teach English. Great. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, my goal and aspiration is to actually do youth work uh, all okay. over the world. Okay. So at what, what, at what point in your life did you decide to begin studying Arabic? I mean, when did it become something a priority in your life did you always speak Arabic uh, as a second language or you really you had a small Arabic background and you wanted to to go forward and study more uh, it, was, it was many things many different factors uh, obviously going to the Jummah Khutbah every day listening to the Salah wanting to know uh, to understand uh, understand the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, from an early age um, made me want to to finally uh, take to take the pursuit to pursue learning Arabic language the Arabic language and also um, uh, you know, being involved in the community, uh, Arabic is a, a, an excellent asset to have. But yes. I think if anybody makes their goal to understand the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's barakah in that. If, you, if that's Definitely. your primary goal, then, then I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. Wallahi, that's great. And you are from Canada. Yeah. So your parents are, speak another language, I suppose, or yes, no? Yes, um, you can say Indo-Pakistani background. So okay. uh, we speak uh, Urdu, which is close to Arabic. But at the same time, uh, there is a, the, the grammar is completely different. It has some loan words, we can say, but yeah. that's it. Yeah. So I asked you that question because, and as Muhammad Gabba also is a non-Arabic native speaker, so learning Arabic is a huge challenge, and any young Muslim 
from a non arabic background, he has a big obstacle in front of him. And sometimes myself, you keep putting it off and you say, I can never accomplish this. I can never do it. And so you never even begin. <laughs> or you get old like me, you're 30 years old now, you say, oh, it's too late for me to begin to learn now. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about this, you know, challenges, obstacles, and the solutions to, to them. So we'll talk about this, your experiences, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, I just want to add something quickly. I have a friend right now uh, who's, I think, 50 right now, learning Arabic Allah in Allah. Cairo. So Allah it's Allah never Allah. too late. It's yeah. never too late. And he's doing fantastic. Yeah. People are Incredible. astonished by his progress. That's great. Okay. Brother, go ahead. Same thing. Your name, where you're from. Talk a little bit about this topic, youth goals, uh, obstacles facing the youth. I know. I'm sure you have some personal experiences Definitely. to share. Uh, my name is Leith Al-Khadiri. I was born and partially raised in Anaheim, California. Moved to Jordan later on in my life, and I'm currently studying here in Egypt. I'm studying in the Faculty of Dentistry, Okay. and I'm 20 years old. Great, wonderful. Okay, and uh, we, we, we all had uh, experiences in youth. Yes. Uh, a simple obstacle is uh, culture shock, for example. You know, uh, I was raised for the first 11 years of my life in America, and I was very Western-oriented. I was very oriented in that, in that sense because I was raised there. And moving to Jordan at the age of 11, so uh, I experienced culture shock, uh, different mindsets, different ways of thinking. So, you know, everyone, yeah. the, 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 I think the most time you're subjected to obstacles is when you're, uh, you're in your youth. Yeah, I, and we can be even more just straight up, you know, Anaheim, I mean, this is not just America, this is Anaheim, this is like Southern California, the land of parties and surfing and drugs Definitely. and drinking. I went to UCLA and women and, and sex Come on, I mean, you guys, this is a big thing. This is mm -hmm. Anaheim, California. So these are massive challenges facing the youth. I, I suppose even someone who's in this area who's trying to be a practicing Muslim, he's trying to do good, it's going to be very challenging for him. Definitely. So let's talk about the solutions to those problems, inshallah. inshallah. But let's perhaps we can identify, what do you think the biggest challenge or obstacle facing the youth youth today is with regards to being the best person that can be the best Muslim? Like, what do you think the best, the biggest challenge is for them? Mm. For me, I think it's... it's women or men, mutual attraction. And this is also becomes problematic because marriage has become difficult. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that also in Shahallah. But perhaps we can talk about what do you think the biggest problem is facing the youth or what was your biggest obstacle growing up? You know, I think according to my own perception, uh, this time around, we, uh, we are praising uh, the improvement in, in technology. We are talking about, we ha we're having different type of, uh, uh, in different areas of technology, we're having computers, iPads, lab, iPhones. Uh, all these things that we are, we are seeing, we are in, in 21st century, everything is coming out every day. At the same time, there are t many disadvantages in all these things, especially with regard to the youth. So youth of nowadays, so, Majority of, of us, we, 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 we grow up in a, situ in a society that we want to have all these things. We are pursuing all these things instead of us to pursue, to, to pursue knowledge. Right. So we want to have iPad, iPhone, right. all things. So, and then we started using, wasting much of our time right. on chatting, sending messages, doing right. things. Look, in, in Islam, there is, uh, 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 according to the Sunnah of the Prophet, yes, we have, uh, uh, وسلم, there is night prayer in which the Prophet used to do. So... For us, also, it is it is it is an incumbent for us to, to follow all to do all these things. So now, uh, let me ask you: If you start chatting chatting with his friends from from nine, eleven, twelve, one, two, he didn't sleep. So can he, is such a person can we expect him to pray at night? Or let alone yeah, yeah. we are talking about Salat al Fajr. Yeah, yeah. So all these things are the challenges, are the, the disadvantages of these technologies that we are being influenced with. Yeah. So we use of this nowadays. Not that we, 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 we avoid all these things. We can use them, but we have to also to schedule our time to know what we are doing, not to, uh, to yeah. allow all these things to take much of the time for us, from us uh, a, a, a pursuing knowledge or prayer or on some other things like that. Yeah, excellent points, excellent mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. uh, brother, what I wanted to mention, perhaps we can do it like this in this episode, inshallah ta'ala. Mm -hmm. We'll all comment on Muhammad Garber's comment, and then we'll go back and take everybody's thoughts, because I thought... That, that is really nice. Materialism, mm -hmm. okay, <coughs> was, was the main point, and technology being used in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Let's all comment on that. But go, but Abdullah, go ahead. Materialism as an obstacle or challenge for the youth, mm -hmm. and using technology, mm -hmm. iPads, iPhones, mm -hmm. tablets, computers, in the wrong way. How big of an obstacle and challenge is that for, and danger is that mm -hmm. for the youth? And what is the solution? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, in my opinion, like, you know, it's like so many challenges for sure, like, you know, against like, the youth, like, you know, they face so many things. But the point is, like, you know, uh, one of them is like you know, yeah, materialism. You're right. Mm -hmm. And like you know, like like we have like iPads, like iPhones, like you know, like you know, our phones and like 
social media and all these things, but the language itself, like, you know, addressing the youth, like, it's totally different. Like, they spend so much time, like, you know, like, in maybe watching, like, you know, videos, like, listening to music, all these things. But, like, the language, like, you're addressing the people themselves, they don't find, like, you know, any, for instance, like, you know, Islamic apps a lot. A lot of programs, like, the, like this wonderful program, I love it. Like, like, for the youth itself, giving them the chance, like, kind of to speak up. And all these things. Unfortunately, like, you know, the people are, con like, kind of taking decisions and all these things. Dude, like, make the youth, like, take care of the youth. They know them better. But right, like, you right, know, right. like, we should design some stuff for them. They know how they, how they think, what they need, what right. they lack, what they know, all these things. Materialism, so, like, kind of big challenge for this. Of course, yeah. and you know, Dr. Baha from the AUC said, why can't we simply make a video game mm -hmm. where instead of killing people and you take 10 gold pieces, you like do something positive and you take 10 hasanat. Mm -hmm. And you can do this cool game about giving charity, fasting, but you can make a really good video game about this. He's from the AUC. That was a really great idea. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Challenges, obstacles facing the youth today. What are their solutions? Uh, go ahead. Sure, I'll, I'll share a personal story about the materialism. Uh, when I was young, I, I wanted to, uh, my dream was to have a Porsche 911 Carrera. <laughs> so that yeah, I, I had a poster of it in my room as well too. So that was my, that was, I could say even that was my goal at one time. And then I started to reflect, okay, wh what, is, what am I going to do after that 9-1 career? Is that going to fulfill some kind of happiness? Is that my definition of success? Is that how shallow I've become? So uh, r youth really need to reflect. Reflection is, is so important today. It, it's become, uh, you know, we're talking about obstacles. When youth, have, when youth are in their environment of friends, school, family, they have all these kinds of social pressures, they don't really get a chance to reflect and think outside the box. Right. So right. teaching them to reflect is probably one of the solutions that we Definitely. can work. Towards. What about technology used in the wrong way, like Brother Garba said? Uh, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm on Facebook and YouTube Me and Twitter, too, uh, too. so I can't really speak on Me that. Too. because Me too. It, it is actually quite addictive, to be honest. With yeah. You. You're always checking your iPhone or phone. Or yeah. Something yeah. Like that. Of, so of it, course. It is tough. Um, but on the materialism aspect, on the materialism side, I will say that uh, it really comes down to your definition of success. What do you, how do you, how yes. do you define vic victory, progress? Yes. If you define success as um, uh, you know, someone with a lot of money, and, and it's not haram to have a lot of money as long as you use it in a good way, but uh, you really need to redefine our definition of success. Yeah. And, and one person told me something, uh, he's actually an Egyptian brother, by the way, works in Dawah. He said the great way to, uh, to redefine someone's definition of success is, listen, L look at their tower or their, t uh, their tower of values. So, for example, their values have, uh, or their goal has become to attain a lot of money, get a good career, family, uh, or whatever. D what a lot of people do, unfortunately, is they try to break, break that down, and, and they become defensive. Yeah, of course. So it, it, it becomes a clash. He so said, don't do that. Instead, build a tower of values and aspirations beside that tower that's higher. So, for example, talk about the Sahaba, talk about their goals, talk about their success. Talk about talk about the the success the intellectualism of Muslim scholars, right. our great history. Once you build that higher tower, and you're 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 looking, and 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 you can get them to envision themselves staying on that higher tower, higher tower higher tower. They'll look down at their old tower and, and think nothing of it. Yeah, because yeah. they're, they're they know they're standing in a higher place now. Yeah, great point. And I think that like you said, prioritizing this is huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. great point. Yeah, go ahead, brother. I mean, you're from Anaheim. I mean, materialism is like the the word of the day definitely, in California, definitely. materialism. Well, I think um, the main problem facing the youth of our generation of 2012 and, and so on and so forth is being exposed to every kind of person with every kind of philosophy, uh, people with different kinds of principles, being exposed to them in the comfort of your home. Back in the day, we're talking 20, 30 years back, how probable is it that you've met a drug addict? Yeah, Very right. improbable. You've, ne you've, never, you've never met someone who's committed zina. You've never met someone who's a drug addict. Yeah, right, right. Every one of us has met every one of these people on TV. You know, you yeah. get a, a, slip on, a slip on the remote and you'll be on a channel that has a very promiscu a promiscu a pr promiscuously dressed woman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if, if I were to tell you, oh, your son is sitting with a, a badly dressed woman, you'd be like, oh, but y your son is virtually sitting with a yes. woman like that. He is. He, is. he really yeah. is. Great. I mean, and these people... Um, I want to talk about friendship, you know what I mean? In, in practice, a friendship is, uh, having a friendship with someone is someone who you, whom you exchange thought, uh, thoughts with, whom you know, whom you, you spend a lot of time with. You would never want your, your son to have a friend that does drugs or that's uh, involved with music 24-7 or does all these things. But at the same time, these people that you're watching on TV, they're your friends. He's yeah. sitting with that person two or three hours a day, that's, that's your son's friend. Yeah. And, uh, and there's an example of the effect of friendship on someone's life in the Quran where... 
someone ends up in, in the hellfire and says, uh, لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا. I wish I never took so and so as a friend. Yeah. So this is friendship. I mean, people, yeah, yeah pe- people sometimes think that uh, friendship is just me and you sitting in the same table. I don't have to see you to be your friend. So yeah, um, this is considered friendship. People have to understand yeah. that your your son is hanging out yeah. with someone who is so and so, and it's exactly how things are. I mean, would you invite a prostitute or drug dealer into your living room? No, no. Definitely but not. by turning on the TV, that's what you're essentially doing. Virtually doing, doing so. Yeah, so I, this is the problem, and in, in the, in the technology can be used in a really good way, mm. but it's so easy to be used in a bad way. Yeah. And also, even if it's not necessarily used in a bad way, you use it in a way that's wasting time. Definitely. Mm. So this is problematic as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, inshallah, in the next segment, we'll go to Brother Abdullah, and Abdullah, why don't you give us a couple of ideas, one or two points that you think is ma- are other major challenges facing the youth, and we'll take some solutions for those. As well, you guys stay tuned. We'll also have a report, inshallah, in the next segment. So stay tuned to Let's Talk. How perfect my is and I praise فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا There are three levels. Sister Umm Rayhan from Bahrain. Assalamu alaykum. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fahim from Sweden. Assalamu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feek, Fahim. May Allah bless you and your family. Um, Sheikh, I have one question. No. That is not allowed. Why is it allowed? Because the Prophet said, Man minna. He who deceives or betrays does not belong to us. He's not one of okay. us. A person who is giving the sadaqa or leading the prayer does not have necessarily to be praying fard. Maybe he's praying the nafl that is after the prayer, the two sunnah after vuhr or after maghrib or after isha. And the follower, the Imam, will be praying with the intention of offering the fard that he has missed. Okay, Barakallahu Feek. Welcome back to Let's Talk. We're talking about obstacle challenges and dangers facing the youth. And as a matter of fact, one brother working on this program, he's uh, the assistant director, Mutaz Nabil from Mahal, Egypt, a wonderful brother, a young man who's recently married. Uh, may Allah bless him. His wife recently con- conceived and is pregnant as well. We want to ask Allah to give okay. them a healthy and righteous baby. Mm-hmm. And I only mention Mutaz Nabil because he's a young man and he works very, very, very hard behind the scenes here, as many of the people do. And you only see us guys in front of the camera, so we have to always remember to thank the guys behind the camera. So thank you, Mu'taz Nabil, for your hard work. Now let's get back to our uh, program. Brother Abdullah, I want you to share one or two big obstacles facing the Muslim youth mm-hmm. and what are the solutions uh, for them. Because you're, you're still 23 years old, mashallah. So yeah. you're, you're more connected than me. I'm an old man. I'm 31. I used to be young. I used to be Don't worry. Age is just a number. For me, age is <laughs> just a number. Yeah. Yeah. Remain the same from time. I'm 17. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> One of the, the things that really like kind of... Uh, kind of regard like as or like as an obstacle for the youth like you know just like one of those things like maybe like giving them chance and the role model can you tell me not like ask anyone like on the streets now like a muslim guy like you know like name 10 sahabas as you said like before i will coach you you know like that will be like really hard like like can you like tell me like you know like 100 like musician or like you know singer or something or dancer or whatever like you know he will name you like just like in one minute you understand me like the lack of role models in our society unfortunately like you know not too many, like we have just few, like preachers, some people like who can like reach the youth. Right, we need to go back and dig in our history. Like you find like so many great role models, companions like. of the prophets. Like they were like we mm-hmm. youth and they, they had like the leadership. They were like giving the chance to right, do and, right. like all these things. They were like, you know, they were trusted. And I like, kind of, 
we need to like to get back from to, to those the role models and like you know just like learn like you know they were in the same conditions they were Muslims and they would say like you know like in, in like here living like you know in the same conditions like what we live like Definitely. we share with so many things role models yeah. our role models now like from like you know and maybe like and and like a Western like you know uh, musician okay. like you know I don't know entrepreneur and all these things like yeah of course models. we're gonna continue to speak about this topic and we have some, some some thoughts to add to your thoughts as well. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick report. You guys stay tuned to Let's Talk. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Hi, if you're a smoker, I have some great news for you. You don't have to be caught up in smoking for the rest of your life just because you've been a smoker for a long time. You can stop smoking. And without chemicals, without prescriptions, without nicotine gum or the patch or anything else, you can stop smoking. Isn't that a great idea? I mean, you've seen all the commercials and the toes coming off and the lungs coming out. It's all just true. I mean, let's face facts. It's true. If you keep smoking, you're going to just kill yourself eventually. And just think of all the money you've been spending all your life. It's like a quarter of a million dollars over a lifetime at today's prices. So it's time for you to make up your mind to stop smoking. Welcome back to, the, to Let's Talk. You guys, uh, brother Abdullah, you guys, look, I like that clip. Really, what do you guys think? Smoking, I mean, I don't have any more mercy for smokers. I'm sick and tired of them. Mm -hmm. I, I accepted six, Islam six years ago. I'm just a normal guy. I don't smoke cigarettes. It's not a big deal. I, don't, I haven't listened to music in six years. Just leave it, you guys. I'm sick of people smoking cigarettes. And they always say, uh, you know, they always have some excuse. Well, like I'm finished with the smoker. I'm tired of it. Just stop smoking. It's simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Mohammed? We're going to circle. Well, I, uh, whenever I see smokers, I just think of them as, as if they are foolish. Yeah, well, like. Because uh, how come, firstly, when they are doing the, uh, 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 the advertisement of this thing, they will say the Federal Ministry of Health wants <laughs> that these things kills. It kills. <laughs> yeah. So at the same time, when you look at the cartoon of the, of the cigarette, it is <coughs> there is a, a, a diagram there showing that if you drink, if you smoke this thing, this is going to be the, a, a, a consequence. So but at the same time, people they still spend a lot of money to buy this thing. Yeah. How can I use my money to buy what is going to harm me? Yeah, yeah. So great. that is why I believe all those who, spe who smokes, they are, sp they, they are the foolish ones who, who, who smoke because besides wasting their money. This, they, they also use this money to harm themselves and others. So, as and others part of not, not, yeah, not them only. They are, they are, they are going to. They are harming others because if if they are smoking, you, you move closer to them. You get this. this they are strong. Yeah. They, they are strong. You don't want to hear it. So this thing is yeah. it is very uh, 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 right. uh, out of. Is it out of and by yeah. Mm. And by the way, about young people, because mm. we're relating to the youth. Well, I tell you, don't get trapped now you think it's fun and trendy don't get trapped in this addiction because it is an addiction then you're gonna be 40 years old you can't breathe you smell bad your face looks like a catcher's mitt you're all wrinkled up <laughs> you wasted your money don't get caught up in this now mm -hmm. uh, that, that, sure. that, that's what i think but uh, do you want to comment first like you know we should pray for them like you know like mm -hmm. we should ask a lot like to kind of like Help them make, it easier, make yeah. them move this like bad habit mm -hmm. second thing like you know it's uh, a true muslim like you know will have like those like or this like Total self control. Like we, we like we fast Ramadan. You can like you know you abstaining from like you know drinking or like you know eating. And they like smoke cigarettes. On the, I've seen them smoke cigarettes in the daytime in Ramadan. Oh. Really? Yeah, I've seen them. Actually. I mean, like uh, most of the people I know, like you know, they can c control themselves, like you know, from the sunrise to the sunset. Dude, you can control yourself. So like. You can control yourself now. Yeah, you should have like total self controlment yes. on yourself. Mm -hmm. A true Muslim will prevent himself from like f from zina, for instance, like you know, before marriage, from like drinking, for instance, like from going this way or watching this or doing these bad things, like smoking. I think it's an easy thing. Psychological matter. Uh, it needs like practicing and it needs lots of encouragement and lots of, like kind of uh, like don't kind of call them down or reprimand them. Like just like pray for them. And I kind of encourage them always, like always, like kind of deal with them, like you know, I just not sympathy, sympathy, like you know, I sympathize with you. No, it's empathy. I feel the same like you, and I pray for you as well. And yeah, let's be together yeah. always. Yeah, I agree with you. But I, brother Bas, I tell the people, you know, when they smoke around me, and they've refused to put out their cigarette. I say, now you're harming me. Yeah. Talk for a lot. You want to kill yourself? You want to kill me too? Number one. Uh, number two, uh, if you can stop smoking, like brother Abdullah said, from morning to night, 
then wallahi, you have no excuse because you've broken the habit. This is the beauty of Islam. If you can stop smoking all Ramadan, or at least from the daylight hours, then you can stop smoking. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, brother? Uh, SubhanAllah. Uh, you know, I really like what Abdullah said that, because uh, uh, me, I hate, I despise smoking with a capital D. Um, <laughs> and, and, and at the same time, what I appreciate what Abdullah said, that you have to do dua for them, you have to have empathy for them. Uh, and then, and you know, we have to encourage them. As you said, if they're able to break the habit in Ramadan, then, then we, we should be able to remind them of that moment. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly interested in the psychology of smoking. Why do people take up smoking? Why do people stick to it? And uh, why has smoking spread to the Muslim world? I'm from, uh, by my background is Indo-Pakistani. It's predominant in those countries. It's predominant here. Why, um. so, so I actually was, uh, one day I was on the street near the uh, World Health organization in yeah. Nasser City actually oh, okay. and then if you look at their their building they've got a big big no smoking sign like uh, and I'm wondering I, I hope they're doing something in there yeah <laughs> but uh, I, I actually before that I actually started talking to uh, somebody on the street guys and I asked them why did you pick up smoking I'm just curious to know and wallahi he gave me really two two answers that really benefited me to help me understand the psychology of smokers he said number one he talked about ihbath, which is like uh, depression, depression, frustration. Yeah. He's like, uh, you know, we, we, we use this because we're just depressed about life. We're depressed about some matters in our family, and we use it to a way to vent. And the second thing he told me, uh, which is like when we were young, we'd watch these films uh, with, I don't know, Adal Imam or whatever, who are, who yeah. are the guys, <laughs> other, other actors, These's I don't want to point any fingers. And they're, you know, they look so cool with their cigarettes yes. in their mouth. And so he's like, these were kind of our role models. Uh, you know, subconsciously, we, we think about these guys uh, and, and how cool they were. Uh, why, why wouldn't I smoke? My father said to me when I'm 10 years old, like I see many people do, boy, go buy me a pack of cigarettes. Why wouldn't I become, if I saw my father smoke, well, of course, yeah. I, would become, I would smoke myself. Go ahead, brother. Uh, I'm going to comment on a, a phenomenon that I've, I've observed recently. Okay, so cigarettes back in the day, the, the packs had nothing written on them. They didn't say that uh, it causes uh, cancer, cancer and then they had a picture of a mutated leg or whatever. They had none, none of that. They had the marble miles and the camel dollars even. Exactly. Anyway, it's not yeah, They looked good back in the day. Aesthetically, they were, they were pleasing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, in, an, in an attempt to prevent people from smoking, the government, um, they forced them to put some pictures up and all these the little messages and, um, and, and they, gave, they, they raised the tax price on cigarettes. When, the, when these companies first tried to do this, they would write, like, smoking causes cancer on the side in a really small, uh, like, r really small font and whatnot, so that it, it won't actually be seen, you know what I mean? And I think what they realized is <coughs> that whether they write it or not, people are still going to smoke. Right. And now if you go to, uh, like, in the airport, you look at all these different packs of cigarettes, and you would find a variety of messages. Smoking prevents pregnancy. Smoking causes cancer. Smoking, all different things. And they're actually part of the design now. They actually look good the way yeah. they, they write it. So the, the message that it gave me is that they're, they're enslaving people. They, the companies, at first, they were afraid. They were like, oh, we don't want to write this. People stop smoking. Then they realized whatever they write on the it pack, doesn't it doesn't matter. So yeah. now it's, it, they'll write whatever you want. They'll even put pictures up of mutated bodies. and yeah. like, like here in Egypt, they have pictures of a mutated leg or a mutated tongue on the, on the pack, and people are still smoking. So it's actually enslavement. You're being yeah. enslaved. It doesn't, you don't matter, it doesn't matter what's written on the, on the pack. You're still going to smoke. Any. But re relating yeah. this to youth and education in America, for better or for worse, man, yeah. They had a campaign against smoking because they used to all smoke in the 20s. They had a big campaign in schools, and they taught young kids smoking's bad. Mm. Smoking's bad, and they made no smoking sections. You can't smoke here. Now you can only smoke inside, but in this corner. Oh, now you can only smoke outside and further and further. Mm -hmm. So now American people are like, you smoke cigarettes? Like, they don't like it. Get away from me. Yeah. However, they have other problems, like they drink alcohol and they smoke marijuana. They think it's okay. Mm -hmm. But what I mean, in this point with the cigarettes, because they educated the youth at a young age. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so this is important. Absolutely. To, uh, mm -hmm. Of course, some solutions will never despair in the, the mercy of Allah. If you are a smoker, mm -hmm. never despair in the mercy of Allah. You can't smoke. Uh, you, you can't stop smoking. So. Uh, and also, at the same time, I, th I think uh, uh, Muslims must know that smoking is haram in Islam because it causes that Almighty Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تُلْكُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى تَحْلُكَ And do not cause with your hand whatever will, 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 will drive you to, uh, to, to what will kill you. Yeah. Do, not, do not cause this with your hand. So... Number one, in the day of resurrection, you are going to account for all this money that you spend in this, in this thing. Yeah, Secondly, if you kill yourself with it, Almighty Allah is going to punish you because you are the one cause your, your death for yourself. So, and also, uh, all those people that you arm with your this smoking, you are going to be, are going to be accounted uh, for, for it in front of Allah. So even if others don't listen, let we Muslims, we have to know that this thing that we are doing is haram. 
do not smoke again. Yeah, I know a man who had open heart mm. surgery who was very scared and sad. Mm. I tried to give him strength. His children were crying, his two boys, his wife, his whole family were very upset. Wallahi, why did we do this for? Why did you put everybody through this? For these stupid cigarettes? Leave it. Definitely. But let's go back now, we'll leave the cigarettes. Uh, let's go back to uh, youth challenges, obstacles, dangers facing the youth. Brother Bess, if you can talk uh, in, from your experience uh, in Canada there, what were some major obstacles and challenges? And how did you approach it? How, what were the solutions that you offered? Do you have a few hours? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. SubhanAllah. I mean, okay, Brother Leith, uh, when he says something, it, it, made, it made me think of something. I actually asked a question to Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad once, yes. uh, who's been on Huda TV. Yes. I asked him uh, about the youth, uh, w in a w w uh, because this this question <coughs> astonishes me that if the youth today are far from the Deen today, as we can see in all of, all, all of our countries, mm -hmm. then what is Islam going to look like in 20, 30 years? Mm -hmm. That's the question. So uh, they are the the. I mean, why are we talking about this issue? They are, are our biggest asset today. Uh, now, the obstacles facing the youth identity, I would say. And um, Abdullah, you mentioned something about identity role models, right? Role models help shape your identity. Now, on one hand, the Muslim youth, they, 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 look, at, they look at their identity, they look at Islam as a second identity. So, okay, I'm, I'm Palestinian, I'm Pakistani, I'm Egyptian, I'm Greek. And yes. I'm, I I'm also just happen to be Muslim. Yes. They don't actually look at Islam as a necessarily a way of life, a way of looking at the world. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, that's a big problem. I, I think so that, that was actually <coughs> the also the answer that Sheikh Haytham also gave me. Yeah, I think this is a big problem we see in the, in the Muslim world. We have divided our, uh, we are divided amongst ourselves. So what, what is the solution then for that? So the solutions would, would be then youth programs uh, spread throughout the major masajids, <coughs> uh, opportunities for youth to be able to, to come to some kind of weekly program. This is what our communities are lacking. But I want to specifically mention within those youth programs, mentorship. Mentorship, if you look at any kind of research, uh, anybody who sp uh, specializes with the youth, Mentorship is so important. Having a role model who they can relate to, who they can look up to, who, they can, who, can, ad who can advise them. Right, and right. what I mean here, um, I mean, we love our shayukh. And, uh, and there, subhanAllah, there are many shayukh who have, have become mentors and, and who, who the youth feel that they can connect to. But we also have sometimes, uh, from the shabab, from the youth side, they are sometimes shy to approach the person with a, a beard and wearing a thobe. Oh, man, can I, t can I really take my questions to him? Will he really understand the realities facing the youth? And so that, men that mentor helps to serve as a mediator between the sheikh and the youth themselves. Right, but, but also uh, many of the sheikh are out of touch. You know, uh, brother, with the young, br yeah, br brother Leith actually uh, mentioned something. Uh, said that he said, that, you know, we, we all have the experience of being youth. And that's mm -hmm. true. I completely agree with him. Uh, but I would like to add to that in, in that um, we also, even myself, I also feel like I'm disconnected from the youth. So it's been like 10 years since I was in, more than 10 years since I was in high school. Yeah, right. And what's happened now is that the culture has completely changed, even the lingo. I was talking to my cousin from America recently and he was saying something. I was like, what does that mean, man? <laughs> and yeah, um, right, right. So, so yes, uh, th and then with the shayukh, I do find sometimes, wallahu alam, uh, that in our du'at as well too, we need more du'at who can talk to those youth between 13 and 17, because that's when your mind is like a sponge. That's when your uh, worldview and, and philosophy is, is, is most uh, <coughs> vulnerable, as well as your college years as well, too. So sure. it's, it's, it's I, I'd say, wallahu alam, but between the ages of 13 to until your, your later college years, okay. that's when you're most influenced. You didn't mention brother about Dr. Haitham. You said you had a conversation with him. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, he actually, uh, I mean, uh, his, his, his answer was actually really profound that, that in that he, I, I asked him, considering our youth is the, the biggest, the biggest uh, asset that we have today. So uh, I, I had an opportunity to ask him, you know, what, what, why is it that the youth all over the Muslim world are kind of far from Islam? And um, uh, because if our youth are far from Islam, then what is the Ummah going to look like in the future? So he kind of said that uh, it is th the issue that he believes is that we look at Islam as a second identity. Uh, I'm Pakistani, I'm Palestinian, I'm from Saudi Arabia, I'm Egyptian. Uh, and I'm Greek. I'm Greek, I'm American, um, <coughs> and so you're, you're, you're basically not really looking at Islam as a way of uh, looking at the world, but just like a second identity, it's, just, it's, the, it's something part of your culture. Right, yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, it's a bit sad when you come to travel a little bit and you realize that, in fact, it's a bit difficult, isn't it, that people, we, we are divided, and it's not that easy because we do come from a lot of you know, various cultures, and languages so that we have big linguistic and cultural barriers between ourselves 
it's, it's reality and we have mm -hmm. to have a solution to deal with it. Yeah. But I also, I couldn't agree with you more, our identity as a Muslim is, 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 is important to be the primary identity uh, and not where we, our parents come from, mm -hmm. for example, from Greece or from Nigeria or from Canada. You should be confident as well. You yeah. should be confident in Islam and, and this guidance, that this is the true guidance and this yeah. is the true <coughs> philosophy and this is the right way to go. No. Yeah. If you're lacking the, the confidence and you're, you're looking for more Western philosophies and whatnot, then you're definitely not going to be a true Muslim. You're not going to be following, you're not going to be a head-on Muslim. You're not going to be going on the, on the straight path properly, you know what I mean? Yes, I would like to talk about this point after the break more. I like this point. You guys, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. How perfect my is and I praise Life is a journey, beginning with a single step. The direction is clear. But it still needs guidance. Put a GPS. Welcome back to Let's Talk. We're talking about dangers, obstacles, challenges facing the youth and their solutions. Brother, before the break, you had a wonderful point and you said, look, if you're not confident in Islam, then you're going to fail, essentially, is what you, I think, summarizing what you definitely, said. Yeah, so I think now, what do you think? Kids in college, they're intimidated intellectually. They've been punked and bullied off by philosophers and science who have already defeated Christianity and Judaism from their scientific perspectives. But they have not done that with Islam, but they lump all religions together. So anybody who identifies themselves as a believer, a Muslim, mm -hmm. in the Western world, and even here now, unfortunately, it's frowned upon, yeah. he's frowned upon, and, but, but he doesn't have confidence because the atheist philosophers and scientific oriented people, they yeah. attack them. Definitely. So speak about that experience. Yeah, um, well, in terms of, uh, of science, uh, scientists are on both sides, you know what I mean? Like yes. The, but uh, the ones that are in the media, are the ones that are atheists, but uh, sci scientists are, in, are they're theist scientists, and, uh, regardless of Muslim, Christian, or Jew. But Great they, they, point. Yeah, Thank they, you. they're on both sides yeah. of the, this matter. So, but uh, all the atheists you see, uh, like all the scientists in general that you see, they're all atheists. So people start to think that, because science is, is a logical system of thinking, and this is it's proper. And when you say that science leads to atheism, then you would be like, oh, atheism is probably correct. Right. But that's the impression that they're giving by always showing you atheist scientists. Show me theist scientists, and you, you'll change that that yes. idea. And you know, Adam is a huge part of religion. So, uh, exactly. you know, we love science. It's part of it. It's true. It's, science is logic. It's one, one plus one equals two. So, we do follow it, and that does not lead us to atheism. Yes, actually, science could has led people to Islam. Definitely. Yeah. 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 You know, it's all in the Quran. You know, it, the Quran asks you to think, to look, up, to look around, yes. you, to see how, uh, you know, the, how the difference of night and day, and you know, right. Uh, yani, uh, did you think that we created you for nothing and that you will not be returned to us? Yeah. So, subhanAllah, you know, they make you think that uh, thinking logically will lead you to, uh, to atheism. And that, that, that is bad because that, uh, for, for the Muslim to stay Muslim, he thinks that he shouldn't think. Right. And when he doesn't think, he'll never strengthen his iman. So you come and ask him a question, like, just stay away from me. I'm not faith, faith. I don't know, just leave me alone. Yeah. And he just <laughs> continues praying. But he does not develop any iman because... You have to doubt, you know, not, not doubt in terms of like... You have to learn. You have to learn, To exactly. appreciate. Exactly, you have to, you have to analyze, you have to, not just, uh, you have to interpret what you're learning. You have to interpret hadith and, 
You know, even the Quran was was brought in in the form of interpretation. The Quran is, wasn't brought down completely interpreted by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, there was. There was interpreters after him that interpret parts of the Quran, even to this day. That we're, we are interpreting scientific uh, yes. realities in the Quran to this day. So interpretation is part of the religion. Thinking right. and deep thinking and analyzing, analyzing is part of our religion. Yes, brother. Yeah. So, so Muslims in the Western world, yani majorly, should should know that uh, you should think. You should, you know, our, our Islam. Seek knowledge. Exactly. Islam is a very logical religion. It's a, a lot of people have come to Islam through logic and through right. you know science, thinking about things. Exactly. So. That's a part uh, where that allows Muslims to lack confidence. Is that they think that if I think, I'll become an atheist, so I shouldn't think. Right, right. I agree with you, brother. And also, it's important uh, to ponder over the creation of Allah. Mm -hmm. This strengthens your man. You say, wow, this is amazing. Definitely. This is the creation. What about the creator? SubhanAllah. Yeah, I mean, this is important. Brother. Go ahead, brother. Uh, and uh, I think I want to recommend some solutions to the, uh, the current problems of the youth. You know, nowadays. So I want to address the parents that they should try to organize from, uh, for their children at home, maybe uh, a family uh, program, like a uh, family blessing, maybe, maybe twice in a week in, right. in the family. Community events. Yes, th that they sit together, they enlighten them about the society, Islamic, Islamic knowledge that they give them before handling them to the teachers in the schools or in the environment that they live. Because that is where, uh, in, the, in the family, that is, the, uh, that is where, uh, where the, uh, the, the environment starts. So yeah. they have to bring up their children from here to let them know what is going on. Don't, because teaching them in Islam at home is part of uh, giving thanks to Allah for, for the mercy. Because when you are asking for these children, you are asking Allah to, uh, to, 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 uh, to shower his mercy on you, to give you children. Now he has given, given them to you now. So you know, for you to, to thank this mercy is, to, is to, to bring them, to give them Islamic, proper Islamic knowledge before they are influenced with the society that, they, yeah. that, 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 uh, that will bring them home. So I, I want to uh, advise all the parents that they should try as much as possible to organize uh, family lectures or uh, maybe in like okay. talim for them in Venezuela to let them know what is going on before yeah. they become exposed to the society. Yeah, because right now what mm. happens is as parents, we don't raise the kids ourselves. What we're doing is yes. we're letting the school or the nursery. We, the we put care. everything on the shoulder of the teacher and the, yeah. uh, and the, and the ma'alim to teach them, teach them. And you don't know anything about no. the teacher. That's the problem. Yeah, no. go ahead. I have a go question though, quickly for Muhammad. Yeah. Is, isn't it true that uh, parents, they always say, I want my kids to become good Muslims. I want them to become half of the, uh, memorize the Quran. But they themselves, they're far from the deen. Isn't that true? <laughs> Sometimes, uh, right? You I mean the parents? Yeah, they have to take the obligation themselves to learn the deen. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, 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 it's true. Even if it is too late for them, they, still have to, they must have time for the children to say, okay, yeah. what did you take today? Read it for me. No. So, or if yeah. they don't know, they should, they, should, they should invite something, someone to, uh, to, to test them so, so as to know that what they are spending money on, they are, they are seeing the yeah. result. I heard, uh, before we go to Allah, uh, Dr. Muhammad Salah told me a funny story. He told me a woman called him on the phone and said, can you please give da'wah to my daughters because they don't wear hijab and they're very beautiful young girls. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, you went to meet her. She said, the mother wasn't wearing hijab either. So I told her, of course, of course they won't. So also, if your father is, you know, not practicing the deen, then what will happen to the son? It's natural, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Abdullah, you had an interesting point about the Yeah, like I'd like you, Brother Malik, like to imagine a car, okay, but without an engine. Would it move like just one inch? <laughs> no. So this is like our nation, like, you know, our nation, like, you know, the engine of our nation is like the youth. Yeah. And imagine the, like, the wasting energy or powers, like, you know, most of us, most of us, like the youth, like, spend time on Facebooking or like tweeting, tweeting or like, you know, going here or going there, cafes, watching TV. But how about like knowledge, as you said, Alm. Like, you know, get about you. Like, we should organize, like, youth, like, campaigns, like, mm -hmm. you know, camps. Uh, you should, like, kind of... Activities. I need the culture of, like, helping the other. It's missed, seriously. Yeah, yeah. Like, volunteerism. It's, it's missed in our culture, seriously. We need, like, put it back, and, like, they will find, like, lots of time. They're wasting our time. So about, like, wasting your time, but you, you help and getting help at the same time. You're building your personality, being a better person. Like, you know, like, most of the, the Quran, for sure, verses, like, you know, in a hadith, like, you know, man ta'lama Quran wa allama. Like, you know, the best of you, like, you know, who, like, memorize the Quran, like, you, like, will kind of help, help. This is the key word here, help. Because like, you have time. Like the most precious thing we have in our life is time. Oh, if you wa like if you waste it, you lose your life. This yeah. is like your capital, as we say. Wallahi, the, the, the time uh, and the health. Mm -hmm. I health. Don't, don't, wallahi, don't waste your youth, you know, want smoking cigarettes and 
shisha and watching football yeah. games. Don't do it while live because your, your youth is going to slip you by and uh, you don't know where it went. Um, the value of knowledge is not really appreciated. Is, is yeah. It, you know, Islam really, I just want to comment real quick. Go ahead, take your time. Uh, Islam really appreciates knowledge. And there's an ayah of the Quran, I hope one of you guys know it. Um, the translation of it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about one of the prophets and that how he gave him knowledge. And he says, or yeah. what, what is it? Do you know the ayah? Yeah. Yeah. Surah Ali Surah. I think so, yeah. Mm. No, there's one talking about Allah Taala giving knowledge to a prophet or people. He says, or something, something of that sort. It doesn't okay, matter. Okay. But okay, it's talking about Allah Taala gave someone knowledge, mm -hmm. and 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 talking about how we made them, uh, we blessed them, you know, relative yeah. to the to the <coughs> situation. How knowledge is. Uh, um, is is a blessing from Allah and it's right. a great thing. You know what I mean? And uh, and uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Rabbi zidni ilma." Yep. He didn't yeah. say, "Rabbi zidni malan or or waladan." Rabbi zidni ilma. Yeah. So, uh, ilm is uh, it's a it's a huge part of our deen and it's yeah. it's asked upon us and it's something we should we should. Yeah. Even even Kareemullah like Moses like you know like he were like kind of asked to go after like Khidr like like just because he he has more like you know knowledge. You know, yeah. it's not. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like a, a prophet. Yeah, all like, great, but like you know, I need, I seek knowledge. I seek knowledge. So like you know, he was asked like to go to Khidr and like kind of, you know, through the Kahf, you read every Friday. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you know the story and all these things. So knowledge is like you know appreciated in Islam. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Certainly. Yeah. And also we have to remember also seeking knowledge for the sake of, because now it's it's a problematic. I think sometimes we seek knowledge only for worldly gain, and I suppose there's nothing wrong with seeking knowledge to, for worldly gain, but mm -hmm. we have to. Do it for yeah, yeah, parallel, yeah. right? Yeah, right. Because do you feel like sometimes people they even do something that appears to be righteous, but it's actually because like their cultural background. Like many people, they they're really good about forcing the kids to memorize the Quran. But do you feel sometimes maybe they just did it kind of, and Allah knows best, but just to make sure their parents say, "My kid remembers." Do you, I mean, do you guys feel like that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's I think that's problematic medicine, as well. Because I'm I'm in the the medicinal field. I'm in de I'm studying dentistry. So a lot of people in dentistry and medicine, these are very humanitarian uh, fields, you know what I mean? And being a doctor is a very, very beneficial to the ummah, of very course, beneficial. Of doctors course. are a great thing. But <laughs> a lot of people are doctors, but he doesn't have the hum humanitarian sense in him. He's not doing it with sincerity. You, uh, he's after the money, after being called a doctor, after, after respect. So subhanAllah, right, 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 yeah. it is uh, it's demeaning yani, in, in, in some yeah. sense. Yani, to, it's good to, to have worldly gains. But parallel with Akhir because this is this is Allah's blessing upon you. Right. So you might as well give back. Yeah, ec excellent point. All the brothers yeah. actually mentioned the, the, the Quran here. And uh, I once asked a scholar, كيف يدعو الشباب إلى دينهم? How do you call the shabab to back to their deen? And he said, بال Quran, with the Quran. And it was a simple answer actually, but not, but it's actually very profound because Malik, you were actually saying something about uh, uh, that when they can enter school or uh, college. They can become very confused, especially if they don't have a strong foundation, yes. foundation in their own deen. And uh, this is just a result of uh, a doubts and desires, shubhat wa shahwat, shahwat, right? So, uh, and, 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 and you, you also talk, talked about doubts, you know, people having doubts. So, and the, the amazing thing is we have the answer right in front of us. We open up the Quran and what does it say? ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبُ فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ so yeah, I mean, of course, yeah. yeah and, and imagine how if they have, if they have, and now I now I understand that scholars answer much, but um, um, now I know now how profound his answer was, that if you have a connection with the Quran, and I'm I'm speaking, uh, this advice is to myself even, if that every time we face face some kind of obstacle, can we go back to the Al Quran Al Karim, and and open it up and and reflect upon it? Yeah, of course. Thank you, brother. And I keep you know having my own personal in my personal life. I keep thinking, okay, yeah. where's the best places to raise my children? And I keep saying, you know, I keep saying myself, as long as I can make sure that he understands and memorizes and learns the Quran, then wherever we go, inshallah ta'ala, he will have that compass, yeah. and mm -hmm. this will be saving him, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, that's true. Huh? So, Barakah Fikum, you guys, this is the end of the episode. We're all out of time. I want to have you guys back for uh, another mm -hmm. episode, inshallah ta'ala. You guys, thank you for being with us. You guys at home, thank, thank you, you for watching Let's Talk. Mm -hmm. I certainly appreciate your time. Please continue to support us on social media, Facebook, YouTube. <coughs> And all that stuff, it truly is important for us. Continue to make the well for us at Huda TV as uh, make the well for us that we can continue to remain and continue to broadcast uh, right here from Cairo, Egypt, you guys. Until next time, I'll leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.